Ukrainian air defense downs 86% of Russia's 2,200 attack drones launched this year. Russia has launched 2,277 attack drones on Ukraine since the beginning of 2024, with Ukrainian air defense destroying 86% of them, reported Air Force Commander Mykhailo Oleschuk on Telegram. Since January 2024, Ukrainian servicemen have destroyed 1,953 Shahed's achieved by boosting the combat capabilities of mobile fire groups in the armed forces, according to a military commander. Thousands of servicemen go to firing positions almost every night and shoot down enemy UAVs with all they have, the commander noted. He added that the creation of mobile fire groups was a necessary measure by the Air Force since the beginning of the Russian invasion. These groups have since been better equipped, positively impacting their effectiveness. Unfortunately, Ukraine cannot massively shoot down reconnaissance UAVs. Their number is too large and our air defense capabilities are limited. There is also electronic warfare, but it can only disrupt the UAV's mission. Encountering interference, it turns around and flies back. Why is it so difficult to shoot down a Russian UAV? Invisibility. Many models, especially small reconnaissance drones, are challenging to see or hear during operation. No thermal trail. UAVs that run on batteries leave no thermal trail, making them hard to detect with infrared systems. Limited air defense capabilities. Not all air defense systems can reach the flight altitude of some reconnaissance UAVs. Missile shortage. Ukraine constantly experiences a shortage of air defense missiles. Electronic warfare does not affect all aircraft. Those flying in complete radio silence, emitting nothing and taking photos along a predetermined course, are insensitive to electronic warfare. According to an electronic warfare specialist, the biggest threats to Ukraine are Russian Orlan Zala Supercam and Merlin. Zala and Supercam can be used both as scouts and as fire adjusters providing live streams from the battlefield. Zala is also used to guide the kamikaze drone or rather the loitering munition Lancet. Putin does not trust the FSB. War in Ukraine destroyed illusion of security in Russia. The full-scale war in Ukraine shattered the illusion of security in Russia. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's thirst for totalitarian control distracted the Russian Federal Security Service from its anti-terrorism duties and reduced its effectiveness as a security agency. This is stated in the material of the Telegraph. When Russian troops entered Ukraine in February 2022, the FSB began running filtration camps to test the loyalty of Ukrainians in the occupied territories. After humiliating Russian defeats in Kharkov and Kherson at the end of 2022, Putin ordered the FSB to intensify repression of foreign intelligence services and traitors. The article notes, in the Russian Federation, some activists condemned the reorientation of the FSB. After the attack on the Crocus City Concert Hall near Moscow, Russian journalist Kirill Martinov sharply criticized the FSB for focusing on LGBT extremists and rejecting warnings from Western intelligence agencies that an attack was imminent. Russian opposition activist Ivan Zadanov said the FSB's obsession with spying on Russians and punishing anti-war dissidents had destroyed its effectiveness. Russian state media naturally turned away from this criticism, redirecting public anger towards Ukraine. This allowed the FSB leadership to weather the storm of its repeated intelligence failures and remain unchanged. The FSB's denial of responsibility coincided with escalating complaints in Russia's unprivileged regions where ethnic minorities live. Dagestan is one of the biggest victims of the unequal burden of the Ukrainian war, the material notes. At the beginning of May 2022, Dagestan had the highest level of losses among all regions of Russia. Independent investigations showed that at least 130 Dagestanis died. By April 2023, this figure had risen to at least 806, and the families of liquidated Dagestani men were struggling to receive compensation from the Kremlin. The creation of the Caspian Volunteer Battalion in Dagestan, which mobilized men over 40, ensures that conscription rates are significantly higher than those in Moscow and St. Petersburg. The high rates of casualties and mobilization coincided with the worsening economic crisis in Dagestan. Due to the dominance of oligarchic clans, 70% of Dagestan's budget consists of Russian federal subsidies. 
This is the highest figure among Russian regions. While Dagestan authorities claim that fighting in Ukraine is good for the future of Russia, many desperate young people who do not agree with this, the article emphasizes. Ukraine adapts US M270 systems to use ATACMS. More missile strikes await Russia. Ukrainian M27 rocket launchers have been adapted for American long-range ATACMS missiles, said Ukrainian volunteer Ihor Lachenkov. He published a video showing four M270 rocket launchers firing eight ATACMS missiles, which were allegedly heading to hit Russian facilities in occupied Crimea. On the night of the 24th of June, a series of explosions occurred in the peninsula. The blasts targeted Russia's space communication center in the village of Vitino. According to Militani, American missile launchers have different capabilities depending on the provided munitions. The M270 launchers can fire two ATACMS missiles, unlike HIMARS, which can only launch one missile. The rocket launcher is also built on a tracked chassis, allowing better mobility over challenging terrain. The United Kingdom, Norway, Germany, Italy and France supplied these multiple launch rocket systems to the Ukrainian Defense Forces. The French variant of the US-made M270 designated Lance Roquettes Unitary already had the software and launcher platform modified to use ATACMS missiles without additional preparation. M270 jet launchers are capable of launching two ATACMS missiles, unlike HIMARS, which are equipped with only one missile. At the same time, the jet installation was created on a tracked chassis, which allows you to move better over more difficult terrain. These MLRS were delivered to the Defense Forces of Ukraine from Great Britain, Norway, Germany, Italy and France. In addition, they are equipped with a modernized EFCS fire control system, a new navigation system using GPS and a new communication system. At the same time, the French version of the American M270, which received the designation LRU, immediately had software and modification of the launch platform that allows the use of ATACMS missiles without additional training. Earlier, Lockheed Martin announced it was modernizing additional M270 multiple launch rocket systems for the U.S. Army.